when anthroposophy became active in healing the natural sciences and also brought forth the Goetheanum, the great union of the arts. Its very existence aroused hatred. The priest of the neighboring village, among others, whipped up people's emotions against the Goetheanum. In wild, spoken and written propaganda, people were urged to storm the building and burn it down. Finally, when the movement for the renewal of the religious life of genuine, free Christianity was founded there under the guidance of anthroposophy, they did. Rudolf Steiner answered this hatred with a deed of love, laying the foundation stone for a spiritual Goetheanum, a refounding of the mystery school. The Goetheanum now lives in the ether of the world offering esoteric substance for people united on this path. The first building was formed from within, the second from without. Convex becomes concave. The excarnated Goetheanum works inside out from the periphery, anchored in the mineral placeholder building. The columns flip to the outside. So do the stairs. The foundation stone remains for both buildings. The larger copper dodecahedron in the east, the smaller in the west. In each, a dodecahedral crystal of pyrite is suspended, like one of these. A larger pyritohedron in the smaller copper dodecahedron, a smaller in the larger. From the foundation stone comes the portal motif. And from the portal motif comes the architecture of the second Goetheanum. Now the motif appears in one monumental arch spanning the roof above the facade. The whole building has become a threshold. Here is the second Goetheanum, painted before the first was built. The local building permit authority depressed the top by a couple of yards. The east face closes the back, originally with no windows. Obviously the place is intended to be a university. It was even called a Hochschule, an institution of higher learning for the anthroposophical science of the spirit and its applications in all fields.
pouring reinforced concrete in sculptural molded forms was a new building technique at the time. Rudolf Steiner designed other buildings too. One of the major innovators in the history of architecture, he never studied under any architect. Is he alone in that regard? People said, why can't we build the first Goetheanum again? It was full of love. Rudolf Steiner replied that money is not merely quantitative, but moral. Insurance money is different from gift money. And a building built from insurance money must likewise be different. He recalled the first Goetheanum and said, a home for anthroposophy, built with the pennies, the centimes, sacrificed by those who with their innermost understanding were involved. From the hill in Dornach shimmered a building with anthroposophical will, anthroposophical willingness to sacrifice built into its every cubic centimeter of wood, its every cubic centimeter of stone. This moral substance was built into the first Goetheanum. My dear friends, now we shall begin to build with three million francs, many of which francs come from the pockets of those who not only have no inner interest in the Goetheanum, but who have an interest in this, that this Goetheanum should not be. And when the Goetheanum shimmers again from the hill in Donach, not only anthroposophical willingness to sacrifice will be built into it. What is common practice outside of anthroposophy in the structure of the present world, will then be built into the Goetheanum. Then, my dear friends, seen from the inner, spiritual point of view, a completely different building will be there. There will most certainly be people who will accompany what comes from their pockets and is built into the Goetheanum not only with no deep sympathy, but perhaps even with a kind of curse. Naturally, we can by no means intend to do today what would really have to be done as the most radical thing, to use the three million for some charitable cause, and to build the Goetheanum this time again only from the willingness of our friends to sacrifice. Those who say, then we have to use the three million for charitable causes and have to wait until the building can be built from the willingness to sacrifice, would of course be wrong. They would in turn be confusing what has to happen with what suits self-indulgent, vainglorious intentions. The energy, the strength, 
does not consist in choosing the most convenient path, even if the most convenient path can be portrayed as an extraordinarily moral one in an egotistic sense. Rather, the energy, even when the path must be a tragic one, consists in plunging, if I may put it that way, into the tragedy. But that must not happen in sleep. Rather, one must plunge into the tragedy with awareness and know that one is standing in a zone where one cannot do the purely anthroposophical thing. One must know that, one, that what one has to do, even though it is not anthroposophical, one must balance out on the other side by being that much more strongly anthroposophical. Rudolf Steiner expected that when the year 2086 arrived, buildings would rise up throughout Europe, modeled after the first Goetheanum, and dedicated to spiritual goals. Western humanity needs to see the working of spirit in the world of the senses. When will the Goetheanum arise in the West? <laughs>